So hopefully you utilize the file upload. I'm going to go ahead and delete the label I added before because I don't think it was uh, helpful to get distracted like that. I will include here a couple things. One of them is labels. Well, the rest I won't include them, but we do have to go over eventually also of great books and uh, with great books groups as well. Um, okay, so now the next thing we're going to work on is forums. Why are forums important? Well, forums allow for discussions. And they allow for there are various types of forums, but um, they allow for a synchronous discussion. So let's say one of the things that you can use them for is you go away for a week for a conference. So you go away, but you want them to stay engaged. So that's one of the things you can do. So they can have a conversation when you're not there. And the nice thing about it is we know already from our research that while in a classroom, in a face-to-face -face classroom, some students tend to be more extroverted and talk a little bit more and other students, you know they're there but they're not contributing, that those students actually that don't contribute, the introverted students tend to be more extroverted online or feel more comfortable sharing themselves in an online environment because there's nobody judging them, there's, they don't, they're not talking directly to a person and also as important is that they can think of what they want to say before they say it so they have a time to think about what they want to say and if they make a mistake they can erase, they can edit Moodle for example once you sign a post you have 30 minutes to edit that post and all of that gives people liberty to express themselves in different ways it's not that it's better than expressing yourself in a face-to-face -face environment, it's just different. And some people thrive in different types of environment because of multimodal learning. So it's something to take into account uh, when we think of how to use forums in an online environment. Also, another way is having classmates comment. So let's say a student posts um, a paper but you want other people in the class to comment on that student paper, to improve it, to have constructive criticism, to just uh, a way to help them become even better. Use a sandwich technique, you know, two good things and one bad thing, for example. So they can uh, do that through an asynchronous forum. They are able to write comments and feedback on people's work. So forums allow you to also send in attachments. So that's another benefit they have. And then for simply conversations between a faculty member and their students. So conversations, student, faculty, or a student, student. Okay, and that's three of the major uses that I have. If I forgot one of them, I apologize. Um, but there are various forums, and some are better for some types of discussions than other. So we're gonna add a couple forums, and then I want you to add a forum yourself. Uh, so. Again, remember that now the new menu has to decide. It shows you what it can do, why certain, um, why you want to add certain things. So if you want to add a lesson, it tells me lessons may be used for, and it tells you there what they can be used for. So I'm biased into what I use and what I've seen people use in the three years that I worked as an IT fellow. But uh, there are other ways to use Moodle, and there are other tools. These plugins are not the only plugins available. A plugin Moodle. Uh, they have a, a plugin site. It's not pluginmoodle.com, but it's something like that. And you can even add more plugins, not to this install, but to other installs. Uh, so, but however, that said, forums are one of the best ways to communicate uh, online because they have a threaded system, so you know who responds to who. So, one of the forums that I tend to use quite a bit because I like how clean it is, it's a simple discussion. It's only one thread, so people can comment and it gets indented and you can comment that that person replies to this other person and so on and so on, but it's only one conversation, so it's kind of like, we're going to talk about chocolate, so simple discussion about favorite chocolate. So instead of everybody saying, my favorite chocolate is X and then people responding to that, in their own forum, you could do that, but you're still responding to the main prompt. So the description here is very important because please share what is your favorite chocolate and why. This is a hard question because most people don't have a favorite. You like more than one things. But uh, so again, the question marks are helpful. If you want to put the description on the front page, we'll do it this time. I usually don't do that, but you can do that. You can make for subscription, and you can learn what that is here. For subscription, everyone is subscribed and cannot unsubscribe. 
and so they'll receive post notifications. Uh, sometimes I also make this tracking always tracking on so people will know if they have messages they haven't read I might bring this up to 20 megabytes if I do want them to upload a file so I could also say upload an image of it okay and if you want to have groups you could have separate or visible groups we don't have groups and this is again a restriction uh, settings so now we have a forum and this is the forum because I told it to show the description on the front page, it did. Again, remember, the description was required in this forum. It was it was um, it was read, and if something's read, you have to respond to it. Um, so now we click reply, favorite chocolate, and we're gonna say dark chocolate. Now let's let's be more. My favorite chocolate is probably Nutella. Although I mean, it has a lot of hazelnut, but it's definitely my favorite chocolate. So I'm going to respond Nutella, and I'm going to add an image of Nutella. Actually, we have the attachment box, so let's use the attachment box instead of the message box. So let's go browse Nutella. Images. I like that image. I'll just drop it on the desktop. This is the nice thing about drag and drop. Again, you can use the whole file system, so I could have gone save image as, right click, um, but instead of doing that, I'm going the easy way, which is I'm just going to drop it. Drop. Great. So now pause to four. Continue. Okay, so I just responded, and you can see here in the indenture right there. So that's really important because then there's now a reply here or reply here. So every student could reply to the top post. When it's a simple discussion, not a good idea when you have too many students. Because what's going to happen is this thread's going to go on and go on and go on and get to be a really long thread and students might get lost and that's not a good thing. Um, they might also be overwhelmed uh, by long responses of other students, especially if it's a very complex question. And then the other thing is they may actually not think of what they want to say, they just might say ditto. Ditto to what Samuel said, and that's not something we want sometimes either. So those are some of the concerns, but again, it has a threaded discussion. So let's go back to the main course site. I don't think I shared what breadcrumbs are, so I'm gonna quickly share what breadcrumbs are. These are breadcrumbs right here at the top. So the nice thing about breadcrumbs is, now that I'm adding another forum, you can always go back to the front page through the breadcrumbs. So they'll, they'll allow you to go back and forth in a site with ease. Okay. So that those this is the breadcrumbs okay so if i want to go to my home and see all my courses i go there then i have moodle practice here then it will say forum here and so on so on so on. so it keeps track of which page is under which page so now we'll do a general use form and this is going to be share your paper okay so here we'll put share your paper by friday no is that wednesday or friday wednesday and comment on two classmates by Friday. Okay. And then you could add the whole syllabus description there as well. This forum is different than the previous forum because it has various discussion topics. Okay, so here we can add paper one, and then this is my paper. Okay, and then the student uploads the paper, posts the form, and then another student comes and goes. Instead of adding to that thread, they create a new thread, paper two, and then they go, this is my final paper. There's already a file there, sorry. Okay. So it gives you 30 minutes to edit. So now you see you can have paper two, paper three, paper four, X number of papers. And then each paper of those, sorry, I click on the wrong place. I don't click on the user, click on the paper. Um, each paper of those can then have a thread discussion. So then the, the classmate can come read the paper and say, I really liked paragraph two, etc. And then that classmate has 30 minutes to edit that comment and the editing time is great. So now it's indented. 
Those are the two main forms I'm going to show. I'm just going to talk quickly over other options for forms. So create your own forum next, but what I want you to focus when you create a forum is one, read this carefully, and next is here, forum type. So let's open that up for a second. So you have a simple single discussion, which is the one I show you first. Then we have one where it's similar to the general forum, you don't use, but this one is everybody can only post one post, one discussion topic per person that can be replied to. So the paper one, I could have done the same as I did with the standard forum, but in standard forum I could have added two papers per student, for example. Question and answer is that you can't see other people's answers until you answer, and then there's a blog type format forum as well, um, that is has some similarities to the standard forum for general use. So those are the forum types. Uh, let's go back through the brain crumbs uh, to the main page. And that's it. Now on your uh, box, try creating a forum. And um, again, they're great for online discussions. Thanks.